Welcome to Cardiac Delusions. Let's see our quote today. If a protein can cause sinus bradycardia, of course, but it never causes AV block. Is that true or false? We have a 72-year-old female who presented to the ER by dizziness of one day duration, blood pressure 140 over 90, and heart rate was 40. It was regular. The ACG in the ER showed evidence of complete AV dissociation, suggestive of third degree AV block. The doctors in the ER asked the patient about her drug history and she denied intake of any beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, or digoxin. But she mentioned a recent prescription five days ago, as her doctor gave her evapradine for intermittent episodes of palpitation, and she was already started on this medication for five days till today. The decision was to admit the patient and stop evapradine as provisionally it may be the cause of block, despite objection from some of the doctors who mentioned that evapradine affects the SA node, not the AV node. But the surprise that after three days when she was kept in the CCU, the heart block resolved and turned into first degree AV block, and when it was compared to her previous ECGs, Yes, it showed the same finding of prolonged PR interval, but now she restored one-to-one -one AV conduction. So the question now is if a the real culprit for this complete AV block, but put in consideration that there is a temporal correlation between the appearance of AV block and the intake of evaporidine, and there's a disappearance of AV block with stopping evaporidine. We usually divide bradyarrhythmias into disorders in impulse generation, which are called sinus node dysfunction, and disorders in impulse conduction known as AV blocks. And we know that the being can be caused by primary causes, usually degeneration in SA node or AV node, or secondary causes. There is a list of secondary causes which may cause bradyarrhythmia, but the most famous one that we usually ask about is the iatrogenic cause. That's why we ask the patient about any medication which may be incriminated. That's why we need to check the medications that have negative chronotropic or negative dromotropic effects, which may be a reversible causes, rather than implanting permanent pacemaker without a need. Let's give some examples. We have beta blockers, which are a famous cause for AV blocks or sinus node dysfunction, non-DHP calcium channel blockers like verapamil and diltiazem, plus digoxin, and amiodarone. These are the famous medications that we usually ask about. But what about evaporidine? We know that it may cause sinus bradycardia, but can it cause AV block? Let's see the mechanism of evaporidine. We have the funny channels responsible for sodium and potassium influx, resulting in the slow, spontaneous diastolic depolarization in the SA node, which of course can result to the resting potential to reach the threshold level and start an action potential. Evaporidine inhibits these channels, and so it slows down the spontaneous diastolic depolarization and so reduces the SA nodal firing rate and so reduces the heart rate. So evaporidine, of course, can result in iatrogenic sinus node dysfunction by this mechanism. But can it cause AV blocks? Does this effect affect the AV nodes? There are some articles and case reports about AV blocks with temporal correlation with evaporidine, as we mentioned in our case. Does this mean that there are funny channels in the AV node on which the evaporidine acts, or there is another action produced by evaporidine? on the AV nodes that result in AV blocks. Whatever the theory is, there is a fact that AV blocks can be caused by evaporidine in predisposed patients. So what are the risk factors for bradyarrhythmia with evaporidine? Of course, baseline sinus node dysfunction is a strong risk factor, as here evaporidine acts primarily on the SA nodes, but also baseline conduction defect like first or second degree AV block as they may progress with evaporidine, baseline intraventricular conduction effects like Bunda branch block or intraventricular conduction delay, and use of other negative chronotropes which may result in synergistic effect with much more profound inhibition on the conductive system. The most important one is non-DHP calcium channel blockers like verapamil and diltiazem, as they are responsible for inhibition of cytochrome enzyme that can result in increased serum level 
of epipradine if they are co-administered and so the use of verapamil or deltiazem with epipradine in the same patient may contribute to significant bradyarrhythmias including AV block. We can use beta blockers with evaporidine, but not the non-DHP calcium channel blockers. And we should avoid evaporidine in patients with second degree AV block unless there is a well-functioning pacemaker and to have cautious use in patients with first degree AV block as they may progress to advanced or high grade AV block as in our case. So what are the contraindications of evaporidine? The acute heart failure, shocked state, baseline sinus node dysfunction, clinically significant bradycardia as it may increase the risk of bradydependent or sad depoint, but please don't forget also baseline second or third degree AV block and co-administration with non-DHP calcium channel blockers. In this case, it may result in life-threatening bradyarrhythmia, including AV blocks. So regarding this famous theory that evaporidine can cause only sinus bradycardia, but never ever to cause AV block, is not accurate. Evaporidine may cause AV block in some predisposed patients and so it should be one of the medications to be checked in a history of any patient presenting with AV blocks. Thank you very much for watching this video and wait next week for the next delusion.